Steve Lane and welcome to Youth in Perspective. Tonight, meet young doctors from America who are reaching out to youth in Sierra Leone. Youth voice out their views on employment in this country. And SLOIC takes another giant step for young people. Stay tuned. This is Youth in Perspective. West Africa Medical Missions is an organization of healthcare-minded individuals focused on aiding in the development of healthcare system in West Africa. Now in the studio, Harold Williams talks with them. Well, our program continues. Thanks, Deborah, for introducing our panelists. Um, but I think it would be best for them to introduce themselves. I'm starting with the ladies from my extreme left. Jessica, Gergen, Karis Fulkerts. Okay, Jessica and Karis, welcome. And to my right? Gabriel Slew. And I am Nick Salzman. And Nick and Gabriel, welcome. Now, we invited them because it's always an inspiration to see young people from whatever part of the world it may be to come and be inspiring to our up and rising youths. And you know we have a problem with uh, medical staff in our country. So I would like these people to serve as an inspiration to people who want to seek the medical profession as their occupation in life. Uh, Gabriel, what have you been doing in Sierra Leone? Um, basically what we've been doing is working with secondary school students um, that are mostly based here in Freetown. We have about eight schools that we invited and we invited 10 students from each school for pursuing science or healthcare or nursing just anything to do with the medical field, to um, take, in, take part in a program we're offering at Prince of Wales School. And in total, we had about 110 students that registered, and we've just been teaching about the endemic diseases in Sierra Leone in in-depth detail. Uh, has it just been the Prince of Wales? Um, that's Prince of Wales as a school that we're using as our base, but we've invited um, FSSG, Annie Welsh, St. Joseph, St. Edwards, um, Prince Albert Academy and many schools throughout Freetown, so. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, Nick, are you a doctor or do you have some medical uh, background? Uh, currently I'm a medical student at the University of Minnesota. In addition, I've had some training as a first responder and as a clinical researcher. Okay, and what about you, Gabriel? Um, I'm just pursuing neuroscience and anthropology right now, but we all, our whole team is, have um, experience in clinical research. Okay. All right, coming to my left now, ladies. Um, Jessica, what about you first of all? Um, what have you been doing? What is your specialty in the medical field? Well, I haven't broken in quite yet to the medical field. I've done my undergraduate research um, and then graduated in May. So I will pursue medical school in the near future. Okay, uh, Chorus, what about you? I am a registered nurse and right now I'm working with the HIV AIDS program here in Sierra Leone. Okay, were you working with the HIV AIDS program before the team arrived or are you just doing that as a part of your work with the team? Just as a part of my work with the team here. Okay, uh, do you have anything to say to the young people, um, an admonition about HIV AIDS? Mm. There's a lot to learn, so learn as much as you can. Okay, okay. Jessica, um, you graduated from what university? University of Minnesota. From Minnesota, okay. Yeah. Um, and what about you, Chorus? Bethel University. And what state? Minnesota as well. Minnesota as well. Gabriel, your father is from Morritown here in Sierra Leone. So Correct. that explains your link with Sierra Leone. Correct. Okay, what university did you attend? Uh, university of Minnesota. Minnesota. Nick, what about you? I'm also a Golden Gopher from the University of Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, this is great to um, hear and to see because um, the medical profession needs people like you to come in and pep them up a little bit, mm -hmm. inspire them to pursue the uh, profession. How did you see the reception of the students that you reached out to? Um, the volunteers? It's really been amazing. The students here are just so eager to learn about medicine and science because what we're trying to do is get them to really develop their problem solving skills before they get into the medical field so they have a good strong structure and they've been really receptive and very intelligent. And we've all been amazed by how well these students are taking everything and how eager they are to learn. How many students roughly have you um, 
Well, our, our last tally when I went through everything, we've so far had 80 students attend. So. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And I hope that a good percentage of them uh, actually took up the profession. Okay, I'm going to ask you guys one by one how you have seen your experience with the students in Sierra Leone, whether or not they have responded positively to your outreach. Um, particularly, I don't know, you don't have to take a particular, school, a particular school, but in general, Jessica, what about you? Yeah, no, um, total positive. Uh, they've been receptive to almost everything we've had to offer. They've given us feedback. Um, you know, we've met in the middle in the teaching and they've been really receptive. It's been a great experience. What about the teachers? Were they involved too? Their teachers, I mean? Um, not so much. We have had contact with the teachers and discussed teaching um, methodologies, but more so we've worked with the principals mm -hmm. that have been really reinforcing, hey, this program is important. I think you should do it. So the principals have been really helpful. Okay, of course. What about you? How have you seen the reception of the students here? Mm -hmm. I've seen it a lot in the group work that they've been doing. We've broken them up into small groups and given them problems to solve and critical thinking exercises and they work really well together and they're really excited to uh, share what they've learned with us. You see some potential doctors yeah. and nurses in the, in the group. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Nick, what about you? How have you seen the reception of the students here? Uh, it's been very exciting for me. I think it's my favorite part of my experience in Sierra Leone is the enthusiasm and the vigor that the students bring to the classroom. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting to see their curiosity blossoming through the lessons and to bring resources that we have to them uh, that we've had from our education that they might not this have access to This is so here. unique, it's so unique, I mean, to see a group of young professionals or advising professionals come and uh, inspire young people in Sierra Leone. Gabriel, um, just to sort of to begin to wrap it up, um, how did you see the reception of the students that you reached out to? Um, it's been amazing. In the beginning, we started um, by the end of each class, we'd break the students up and have them present what we had taught them to teach back to the class to get them to develop their skills a little better. And in the beginning, it was really rough because we noticed that it's something that they aren't used to. But now towards the end of the program, it's amazing how well these students are, have confidence in everything they're doing and presenting to their fellow peers. Uh, any candidate for the top school, the most uh, vibrant school? Uh, I, I can't say right now. They're all, they're all in equal running. Okay, yeah. well, that's great. And I'm sure that they'll be happy to hear that, you know, they're all on a level playing field. And uh, again, um, this is Youth in Perspective, and we are bringing to you the medical mission uh, missionaries with a special mission to inspire young people um, to take up the medical profession or just to take health and science issues seriously in this country. And uh, on behalf of all of those watching us right now, and there are a lot of people out there I would like to uh, commend you and thank you. Jessica, Chorus, Gabriel, and Nick, the program continues. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what are you going to be doing after, after, after all of this? Um, after today or after the program? The program. Well, the program's on. The issue of youth unemployment has been a concern for government. Our reporter Yvette Cole Smith sought out the report of youth in the capital. That is all we have time for in our program. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'm Deborah Ellie. Let's take this one back, please. What about Thomasium? S L O I C. Huh? Thomasium. S L O I C. Yeah, I know go. I know go. I know. I know introduce. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, in collaboration with UNDP, has presented a large. I not go through it. I not go through. Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, in collaboration with UNDP, has presented a large consignment of operational equipment for tailoring, carpentry, mansuring, and home management to nine technical and vocational institution in the country. The aim was to enhance a skill development program for youth. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, in collaboration with UNDP has presented a large consignment of operational equipment for tailoring, carpentry, mentoring, and home management of nine technical and vocational institutes in the country. The aim was to enhance the skill development programs for youth. 
the symbolic presentation took place at the Sierra Leone opportunities in the center. And now they confuse me. The noise. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport in collaboration with UNDP has presented a large assignment of operational equipment for tailoring, carpentry, nursing and home management to nine technical and vocational institutes in the country. The aim was to enhance the skill development programs for youth. The symbolic presentation took place at the Sierra Leone Opportunities Indo Industrialization Center in McKinney. Unisa de Cabo has the detail in our report. Okay, you want to and smile. Whoa. That is all we have time for. Thanks for watching. I'm Deborah Ellie, your presenter. Good night. Infrastructure development in Sierra Leone. Some of the police constables, 300 sergeants, promoters. These are the stories you can see in the inside pages of the Awoko newspaper. At the back page of the Awoko newspaper, you can see interesting sports stories, especially about the ongoing World Cup that is taking place in South Africa. Well, from the Awoko, uh, now we got the Premier News, and it says 8 year old girl escapes circumcision. Here you can see the picture of our uh, Minister of Social Welfare, Mr. Kabia, and health contractors to be blacklisted. What we meant is um, uh, commentary page story here on the front page of the uh, Premier News newspaper. Also in the Premier News newspaper, Parliament focus government reform and group credit agreement to consider story page two. UNESCO director speaks on freedom of expression in page four. Terminal Leos disappears from consultants' bedroom in consider story page six. Alaji Mohamed uh, Nabi resigns. Okay, UDK, I, am, uh, I, I, but I think we have to leave it there for now. If you want to get details of what the newspapers are saying, join Lucian Ganda and Tim at exactly five minutes past the hour, 10 o'clock for a review of the local tablets. Will you like join sports producer Unisa in Kago for updates as to World Cup? It's ongoing. Good morning and welcome. Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Salma. Before I go to South Africa, I think uh, good news for Sir mm -hmm. the director for Olympic Africa, arrived yesterday and uh, he met with the Deputy Minister of Education and Transport. He disclosed that the construction of an Olympic Academy will soon commence at the Milton Magai College of Education. Now, the Olympic Academy will include a mini stadium, certain track, and with a multi-purpose court, and uh, also with another building that will house uh, other facilities, including a teaching uh, a program for students of the Milton Magai College of Education. And according to the Minister, if that uh, project is completed, it will give an opportunity for Sierra Leone to host major sports events. So that will also mean a plus for Sierra Leone and a plus for the administrators behind sports. Um, in the South Africa, Ghana has been the first African country to sail to, to the second stage of the competition. Even though Ghana lost their match yesterday against uh, Germany by lone goal, but uh, they qualified on a better good difference against uh, Australia. So Ghana is in the first of their country. Cameroon will have their own match today later on in the evening against uh, Netherlands. But that match is only important for the academic records as the Cameroonians are no longer in the competition. <laughs> Denmark will play against Japan. Well, the match is at 2 o'clock. Slovenia will play Italy and uh, Paraguay will play yeah, against uh, New Zealand. Yeah, nice, but nice. in the second round, Ghana North will Korea. play against the United States. Yeah, of America. That is cool. Okay, okay. Um, Thank um, you, you know, uh, what is interesting yeah. is that um, Ghana was the mm. first African country to qualify yeah. for uh, uh, this year's World Cup. And um, I was fortunate enough to watch that match in Accra. We had the defeated Sudan 2-0. Uh, so it is, it is by no mistake that they've been able to make it. Yes, Ghana is a compact side. Uh, mm -hmm. It reminds us in 1990 mm -hmm. when the, the likes of Wujamila, uh, mm -hmm. Makanaki, and Afede, they all decided to put Cameroon on top. I think uh, that is exactly what Ghana uh, has done. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A team of the future, too. They're a young team. Yeah, mm -hmm. team. yeah. yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. That's our sports producer, Yunisadin Kabo Sheko. Yes, um, the program is this morning, Sierra Leone, and you're watching the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation. Well, um, as we continue, with um, this particular edition of Good Morning Sierra Leone, we just want to remind you that our guest here today, uh, the Minister of Social Welfare, Gender and